You have been recruited by the Star League to defend the frontier against Sur and the Kodan Armada. You gonna bust the record? Centauri's the name. We have to talk about a matter of utmost importance. Step into my office. I've seen him come and I've seen him go, but you're the best, my boy. Light years ahead of the competition. Hey. You were recruited by the Star League to defend... To defend the frontier against Zur and the Kodan Armada. Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Mystery Vault Podcast. I'm your host, RJ McCready. And for this episode, I'm going to be taking a look at something a little bit different. Something different from the other stuff that I've looked at in terms of monsters and ghosts. And aliens and all that sort of stuff. This is a urban legend to do with a video game from the 1980s, believe it or not. And it really did draw my attention. And I first became aware of this when I watched a film called The Last Starfighter, which came out in 1984. It's a really cool movie. It's about a kid that gets a high score on a computer game, where he's fighting an intergalactic battle. And it turns out that um, when you get a high score, you get flagged up to the Star League, and a guy comes down and picks you up, and he puts you into a vessel, and then you take on Zur and the Kodan Armada, and that's pretty cool, and I really like the concept of that. It's not about getting whisked away into space, but the basic concept is, is there. And when I looked at the trivia to The Last Starfighter, I was very surprised when there was a little post that came up to say, that this movie is based on an actual urban legend video game that turned up in the 80s called Polybus. So let's just give you guys a little let's give you a little synopsis on this. So basically it's, a, it's an urban legend that turned up in 1981 in Portland, Oregon. And apparently this this machine turned up in an arcade and it was supposedly put there by the Men in Black for a, for a government experiment. And that's right, guys. First time I mentioned the Men in Black, I'll get into that a little bit later on. And whoever played it, it, it would cause the player to become incredibly addicted to it. And it also caused psychosis, um, migraines. Apparently people will have seizures. They start to see, see stuff. They become a delusion, all this sort of thing. Um, so... When you played this game, it would have an impact on you. And then the strange thing is, it, it it turned up and then it disappeared as quick as it did turn up. Supposedly by the men in black and the government and this whole, this whole um, conspiracy. So, the way I'm going to tackle this today is I'm going to tell the story as if it's true. And then I'll go into some details. And as I always do, I'll see if I can try and root out the core of where it's come from. And then I'll give you my take on what I think it possibly is. So let's turn back the clock. Let's go right back to the late 70s, early 80s. Let's talk about arcades in general. So um, to try and create this building block for this story and to find out where this, this arcade possibly came from, let's go back to 1972. And you've kind of got the boom of a release of a game from Atari called Pong. I think some, some of you guys might remember this. It was basically a basic video game with two bars and a ball. And this created, um, I suppose it became like a social thing for people to actually go out to arcades, gather rears and stuff like that and go and play these games. And then over the next several years, um, game makers increased... Uh, the release of arcade video games, and then you had classic games like um, Space Invaders, Pac-Man, Asteroids, Centipede, to name just a few. So this was the golden age of the video game. And then also, a little bit later on, this is worth mentioning as well, you also had another surge uh, as well, I've got to mention this, in the 90s with games like Street Fighter 2 and Mortal Kombat. Uh, things started to settle down a little bit around about the 90s when you had the home video game consoles like Nintendo, Atari and Sega. I suppose it well, it was probably a little bit earlier than the 90s because you had the Atari, the old 2600 as I remember. So it started to de decline a little bit but 
just to give you some figures here. Um, in the golden age of the video game market, you had over 13,000 arcades across America. And they would feature in bowling alleys, shopping malls, skating rinks, and standalone facilities. And then in 1981, they were making £400 a day on, on an arcade, or $400 a day, with an estimate global value of $8 billion. So arcades were a, a big thing. And uh, unfortunately, I was a little bit too young to experience this golden age in the early 80s, although I do vaguely remember it as a kid. But um, today, just to give you an example, you would see uh, the arcades in fit and TV shows like Stranger Things, Terminator 2, when he goes to the Galleria, and as I've already mentioned, the, uh, the Last Starfighter and the other big movie that came out back then, which is, which is kind of related to this as well, which, which obviously people were thinking about this type of thing, was the film Tron, where the guy gets zapped into the computer and or he gets zapped into some type of ROM and it turns out that, that it's all real and there's a, there's a battle between good and evil, which is an incredible movie for its time. So just to sort of give you that type of... Um, that type of mindset. So when I was doing the research, this guys, um, I was trying to think of the best way I can try and execute this for the for the show to try and tell this story. So I thought the best way is to actually start off by pretending. Let's just pretend that this is a true story, okay? So go back to 1981 in Portland, Oregon. You're at an arcade. You're you in your teens, and you're going down to this uh, like Galleria or. Um, like I say, the, the skating rink or the bowling alley, you've got all your 80s music and your headphones and all that sort of stuff and you're having a good time and you're playing Space Invaders and there's loads of arcade machines. And let's just say you come across this machine called Polybus. Now I don't know about you guys, but as, as a kid I'd probably sort of look at that and think, because everything is new, I'll probably go ahead and play and say, oh this is a cool game. And then whilst you're playing the game in the arcade, the mysterious men in black turn up and they start downloading data. And it turns out that this arcade machine is a government experiment to see what the effects are of an arcade game on people who play it. And as it turns out, you get, um, suppose you suffer with amnesia and insomnia and night terrors and hallucinations and all that sort of stuff. And let's just quickly talk about the men in black here. Um, I'll probably do this as a separate episode, but... Um, they do turn up in the mystery world an awful lot and they particularly turn up at UFO instance and they usually pay a visit to people who have witnessed UFOs. Some people say they harass or they threaten or they even assassinate witnesses and they're part of an unknown organisation to protect secrets or strange activities and they were probably more famously they were famously portrayed in a movie that came out in 2000 with Will Smith which was turned into a fun movie but in all seriousness people do take this seriously and they do believe that the men in black exist and they've been captured on film and cameras and all this stuff and to this day they are a mystery to themselves but they're connected to this case which uh, which I find interesting but like I said I will do a separate um, episode on, on the Men in Black because I think that's going to be another good topic to talk about but going back to the arcade game so yeah kids are playing this game they're getting hallucinations all that sort of stuff and then within a month the game or the arcade game disappears as quick as it arrives and I imagine at that time you probably wouldn't notice because um, there's so there's so many machines to play and you'll probably think that it's been taken away for a repair or something like that. So that's supposedly what's happened but when did this first come about and when did people start talking about Polybus? Well the first confirmed record was back in February 6th uh, 2000 and there was a post on the arcade forum called coinop.org and on this post, there was a bizarre rumour that there was the legend of the Polybus machine. And on this post, it just detailed everything that I've mentioned about the arcade machine. But what it did say was that um, it was released by a company called Sin Solution, which is 
a type of German language which translates into Sense Delete and it actually had a copyright of 1981. So that's all the detail that you had. It got posted onto this um, site and again this would have been like the early internet and game fans read this post and then they become cur curious. It sparked a urban legend as such and people started to investigate it and then in 2003 the owner of coin.org submitted an article to the Grain Pro magazine featuring this story of Polybus and the release of this really bumped up the urban legend because now you're in a magazine you had a spread on the Polybus machine and Fans were starting to believe it because I'm, I guess they were thinking, well, it's, it's been released by the um, company owner of Coin.org. Maybe there's a little bit of something true about this. And it must have been quite a fun read because you're thinking, well, you've got this arcade machine, got the men in black, it's something to do with the government, it's a little bit of a conspiracy. And I seem to remember back in those times, as I've mentioned on the other shows, people were enjoying another surge of the mystery world you had the x-files on tv um there was magazines that came out about roswell and ufos um i, I remember this um there just seems that people were talking more about mysteries and again it was like early internet as well so you um you had access to more information and stuff like that so a story like this coming along in a magazine um activated people's curiosities but at the same time, although the article mentions the Polybus machine and everything that I've spoken about so far, there wasn't any evidence brought to the table to say that it was real, so it still remained inconclusive. But you know what it's like, guys, I've said this before, as soon as you plant that seed, people start to believe it, and that's why this is another important story to the mystery world, because it's, a, it's an urban legend, so some people probably said no that's it, it, it probably not real but then some people said might have said well could be plausible could the government have put this machine into the arcades and I guess it just it, it does spark that um, conversation amongst the fan a, a, a conspiracy you know what for a, for a better word and then in 2006 I computer programmer came forward I'm not going to mention any names these are quite recent posts guys but there's a computer game pro programmer that came forward and he claimed that he was part of the Polybus uh, pro program but he supported no evidence in this and he basically said that it was a experimental arcade machine and as soon as people started having seizures and I think there was a kid that had an epileptic fit or something like that uh, they shut it down and took it away Again, it wasn't proven to exist and there was no evidence. Um, so during the 2000s, Polybus basically enjoyed being like part of a, a urban legend and people were trying to investigate it and work out where it came from and if there was any evidence of, of the existence of this arcade machine. And the other thing that's worth mentioning now, I forgot to mention this, is uh, the actual name itself, Polybus, is based on a classical Greek historian who was born, funny enough, in Arcadia uh, back in those days. And the actual, let's just describe it now, the actual font for Polybus is it's got a green font and the gameplay, um, people are saying it's like the game called Tempest. And like that game, it's based on a three-dimensional surface and you've got to try and figure out these puzzles. So that's the basic concept for the game. So that's a basic building block for this game, right? Okay, so it's imagine, like I say, that, that's come out in 1981. The Men in Black have put it there. It's a government experiment. People are playing it and they're you know suffering these symptoms and all that sort of stuff. And like I say, the first time we found about it is the article in the 2000s and game fans are trying to work out whether this is true or not and the interesting thing is is that people who have read this article have tried to put their minds back to 1981 so these would be the kids that played these arcade games and they're just thinking well actually when when, when it comes when you come to think of it i do remember government official guys turning up possibly like the men in black and there were players that experienced um 
like migraines and psychosis and all this sort of stuff. So it kind of brings a little bit of like plausibility to the table. So when so the fans that are reading this article are thinking, yeah, actually, when I think about it, there was stuff like this going on in these establishments back in those times. But could they could they be mistaken for something else? So when you look into it, back in 1980s, the FBI actually did raids on arcade establishments because there was drug dealing going on they thought that there was gambling going on so it could be a misinterpretation of the FBI and people thinking that they're the, F- they're the men in black so you've got that as a little bit of a tie-in the other thing is that some arcades had mock-up cabinets so you had the real games but then they kind of filled in with um, like say just fake cabinets that were just made up just to make it look like you had more arcades in the establishment and the other thing is um, when it talks about people who experienced migraines and they had illnesses and they, this is actual fact there were uh, two players that fell ill um, back in 1981 who actually played the game Tempest and they experienced migraines but this is only because they were playing the game for hours and I have kind of experienced this myself being, I do play games, um, always have done. And if I play them for any extent of time, you do end up getting a headache. So there is that as well. And there was a kid who tried to beat a record back in that time. Um, he was playing Asteroids for 28 hours <laughs> in an attempt to break a record. But now what, what, what he's also doing in that 28 hours was he was just feeding himself with um, fizzy drinks. And you imagine playing a game for 28 hours. I imagine you're probably going to get a migraine. You're just filling yourself up with sugar and he, he got taken away ill. So the facts of this of this is that stuff like that was going on so you had the FBI turning up at the arcades and you did have kids coming away with migraines but that was only because they were playing the arcades for an extended period of time and I think computer games themselves are incredibly addictive so that is another fact as well so after seeing this post there was actually a British filmmaker and video game journalist a guy called Stuart Brown who did investigate the case um, but he didn't find any evidence at all for the Polybus machine he looked into everything he tried to see if it, if it was real um, but his findings were again inconclusive but the urban legend still existed And now I've got to the point in the episode where this is now the big reveal. So I've tried to look into this urban legend and see if I can try and find some facts. And so far at this point, uh, my findings are that this could be plausible. But when you look into arcades and that time... Uh, yes, people will experience, like say, migraines and addiction to the arcade machines. And then you had the FBI that were turning up, but for other things, because, you know, drug cartels and gambling and all that sort of stuff. So you, you could imagine being a gamer in 2000s and reading that post about the Polybus machine. And I suppose your mind would be thinking, oh, they're talking about an arcade machine that created all this and the men in black. And you can see how this could be misinterpreted. And this is very important to the mystery world in general, I think. it's This is like the main sort of tool and building block. When someone says, it's, a, it's like someone saying, oh, there's a monster in a lake. It goes back to the Loch Ness Monster and, you know, Roswell and all what I've spoken about before. As soon as someone mentions something like this people start to become curious they start to look into it um which i find interesting itself but now this is the big reveal and as a conclusion it turns out that the guy in charge of the coinop.org who originally posted this article in 2000 came out and said that it's a hoax i've made it up I've made this story up. Um, Polybus 
doesn't exist but what I've done here is I've posted something and what he's done or what this person has done is actually done a experiment himself and this is where this case becomes interesting like I say this is the big reveal for this one this one this kind of made me think oh right okay that's interesting is he was looking at urban legends in general and what it basically would take to how easy is it basically to create a hoax <laughs> so what he's done what they've done is they've, they've gone right let's um let's say that there was this arcade machine that came out and caused people hallucinations and it was all to do with the government and he's posted it just to see what people's reactions would be and as it turns out start, people started to believe it and it did actually create an urban legend so basically the polybus machine is someone this guy's experiment to see if he could create an urban legend and that's exactly what's happened so that's what i find fascinating about this case in general and how easy it is to be able to craft a hoax and make people believe it and this guy has created an urban legend about this and i think that's that is the actual experiment itself i guess is to see if we can make people believe and make, make people look back and think oh yeah i do remember like say these men in black possibly turning up which are mistaken for government officials and people um, experiencing migraines and addiction and all that sort of stuff so there you go that's 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 the actual that, that is basically polybus it is a crafted hoax but at the same time even though they've come out and said yeah it is a hoax it was the experiment is to see if i could create an urban legend and whether people would start believing it at the same time, there would probably be that small percentage to say, okay, well, you're telling me that, but are you covering up? Is it a cover-up within a cover-up? Are you only saying that to actually cover up the fact that the government did do this experiment? And why are you saying it's a hoax? It's a real clever one, but at the same time, I like it. And going back to what I mentioned at the beginning of the show, the, the films that or connected to this case such as the last starfighter and tron you kind of there's a part of you that kind of wants to believe it as well at the same time um but as i said at the same time I, I could see why people would would believe this to be true because there are sort of facts as i said you know computer games are addictive and i imagine they probably could make you feel feel ill you know if you're playing these games and you're just constantly eating crisps and fizzy drinks and all that sort of stuff um but at the same time i'd imagine that there that there could possibly be uh guys that play these games that you know got incredible like dexterity and all that thing which could be skills that could help out in modern warfare and all that sort of stuff so you could see how someone could create a game to see if this person is any good for something else particularly in the in the world that we're living in with drones and all that sort of stuff so the setup here is that could certainly some say say like the army or something like that they said well we've got this drone and we want like operators so let's put some uh games out there with with these play you know with these players and see if they're any good and we might be able to re recruit some people for it. Do you know what I mean? So the, the actual concepts there, you can see how that works, especially with um, the, the the main uh, base story of, say, like the last Starfighter in that movie, where you know they've got to recruit this guy because he's good at playing this game. So I can I can see all that. So it kind of goes into sort of different realms, but. Yeah, it, it was, it's an interesting one. Um, I'm glad I covered this one today. It kind of go, it branches off into some different areas and it is a different topic to talk about. And when I researched this, I didn't know how I was going to initially tackle it. So I hope that kind of makes sense, guys. I've, 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 I've spoken about this case as if it's real. And then I've kind of given you the big reveal. But like I say, it in the end it's the the mystery or the main thing here is is to see whether you can create a, an urban legend and they have and they've succeeded so that is that, that that's that's what polypus is it's a creation of an urban legend in the mystery world and it's kind of worked so yeah it's pretty pretty cool at the same time 
But again, like I said, it's there is always going to be that small percentage of you thinking, well, I know you're saying it's a hoax, but could it be real? Well, uh, I guess I'll leave that to you guys. <laughs> what do you think? But having said that, there is a little bit of a legacy here, because in 2007, um, Polybus was released on the PC. Um, and it was actually created based on the urban legend itself. There's also a game on the PlayStation 4. And it has turned up in episodes of The Simpsons. And there was a film called The Summer of 1984, which was kind of like a bit of a throwback to the 80s, but like sort of like the type of sort of goonies, that type of thing. Um, and in that film there is a polybus machine as an easter egg so I think the polybus machine will remain like I say as an urban legend as a little bit of a curiosity of the 80s whether it existed or not um, so there you go uh, that is it <laughs> So there you go guys, hope you enjoyed that episode um, also go and check out the pictures of this machine online um, there's some, it, it looks like a mysterious machine itself with the whole setup and all that, so yeah, go and have a look at it. Um, so that's it, I'm just about to close the show up guys, uh, again like I say, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, a little bit of admin for the show, I am a proud member of the Legion Podcast Network, so please go and check out all the other shows on there, including my other show, Bite Size Cinema Podcast. Uh, you can find um, the Mystery Vault Podcast on iTunes, Spotify, uh, YouTube and several other players on the internet and I've got a Facebook page where I'm most active so um, put some suggestions down there I'll take a look at it for you or any, post any comments or anything like that um, so yeah that's it guys what am I coming back with next so I'm going to be looking at some lost gold uh, the mystery of some lost Nazi gold lake toplets so um, I thought I'd have a look at that because that's a mystery itself because some people go out there and they look for these uh, lost treasures and they spend a lifetime trying to find them and it becomes like a mystery itself so I thought that'd be worth bringing to the table so um, that'd be the next episode so there you go guys uh, keep it spooky keep it safe and look out for those mysterious video games out there so I'll see you soon I think this is a ghost story I think this is a ghost story I think this is a ghost story Sitting here in this room is a well. If you enjoyed this show, then make sure you check out the other great shows on the Legion Podcast Network, like Cinema PsyOps, Cinema Beef, Devour the Podcast, Duncan and Bo Come Correct, Exploding Heads Horror Movie Podcast, Friday the 13th, Get Slayed, The Hell Ming Power Hour, Hello, This is the Doom Show, Hero Hero Ghost Show, Kill the Cast, Underwater Kaiju from Outer Space, Jerry Hates Action, Legion After Dark, Metal Health, Obsessive Cinema, Discourse, Pick Six Movies, The Podcast by the Cemetery, The Podcast on Haunted Hill, The Psycho Semantic Podcast, Rick Radio, House of Wax, Dude Looks Like the 80s, Rabbit and Red Radio, The Shade Cast, Short Bus Cinema, Two Drink Minimum Commentaries, The VD Clinic, Who Will Survive Horror Podcast, and Which vs. the Doomsday Clock. With such a widespread of shows, there is guaranteed to be a niche for you to fall in love with. Horror, politics, movies, books, sex, music, commentaries, health, video games, kaiju, action, news, comedy, and opinions that would most likely get you killed in some parts of the world. We are proud to bring you some of the best podcasting in the world. Check us out at www.legionpodcast.com, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, and any other dark corner of the internet where podcasts can be found.